Hey guys, this is a video I put together for anyone that owns a Shelby GT350, GT350R, and is annoyed at the resonance and buzz in the shift lever, uh, primarily in second and third gear, anything above like 4,000 RPMs. It just sounds like something's chattering uh, or something's broken inside the transmission, but it's actually a very simple fix because it annoyed me enough that I took the time, took everything apart, and I kind of figured it out. So. Today, I had a customer of ours uh, drive all the way out a couple of hours to come to my home shop for me to do this quick fix on his brand new 2017. And I also did a couple other things to his car as well, which uh, he brought a camera along and we shot these videos. So anyway, these are the, this is the tool selection of what's gonna be required to do the repair. And I'm just gonna go over everything uh, quickly and easily. And it should take you anywhere between 10 and 15 minutes. And if you don't have any of these tools or any of the materials such as the heat shrink or the 3M window weld, I will put a link in the description where you can pick those things up uh, quite easily off Amazon. So the first tool we're going to need is a soft hammer. Uh, this is going to be used to reinstall the shift boot. Small hammer with a punch. This is going to be used to remove the drift pin in the shift lever. A pair of needle nose pliers to hold down the spring so you can retain the pin, remove the retaining pin, I'm sorry. A uh, small flathead screwdriver to remove the boot, 3M window weld, 22 millimeter socket to reinstall the boot, some heat shrink. Uh, heat shrink is a little tricky, so you're gonna have to play around with this, but I'll put a link in the description of the one that I used. It actually took me a couple of times to find the right uh, thickness of what we needed. Uh, anyway, to remove the shift knob itself, I used my soft jaw pliers here, and I wrapped the knob with a thicker microfiber towel. This is a Griot's Garage PFM towel. A pair of scissors to cut the shrink, uh, some grease, and a brush to apply the grease. The only tool that's not shown here is the heat gun. And I recommend this to anyone, uh, no matter what you're doing on an interior of a car, if you're removing any kind of panels or trim, to use the heat gun. You know, become a, a little bit of a habit to start using the heat gun because if you start prying, uh, you're gonna start to break stuff. You're gonna cut your hands. You're gonna get hurt. You're gonna get frustrated. And I've been doing this for a really, really long time, over 25 years, and the heat gun will be an indispensable tool to use no matter what you're doing and what you're removing from the interior of a car, uh, not to cause any damage. So let's go over to the car and we're gonna show you step-by-step -step on how to get this done. And if anyone has any questions, you could post any uh, comments in the comments section below the video. And if anyone uh, wants me to do this for them, just send me a DM and uh, we could arrange you to come over to the shop or even my home shop on a weekend or after hours. So let's go over to the car and uh, let's get this started for you. All right, so these shifters are pretty hard to get the knob off sometimes. So I use my Japanese soft jaw pliers and they seem to work really well without damaging the leather when they work. <laughs> Hold on, so just put a good microfiber towel on there and just turn it. Because if you damage the leather, like I did on my car, you're gonna have to wrap it <laughs> or get a new knob. Okay, I think we could get this one off now by hand. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Okay, knob is off. And you can see that there is Loctite used from the factory. Next step, remove the little tray. So sometimes these little clips on this trim bezel are a little bit of a hassle to get off. So I like to heat the area up with a heat gun, it seems to me my tool of choice today. Just heat it up, I mean, just take your time, no rush. You just don't want to break anything and you don't want to cut your fingers pretty badly on the sharp plastic. So, heat it up. And just keep moving around. Okay. Okay, we hear the pop. And you 
go in here. There's the other one. There's the other one. There we go. That's probably gonna be the hardest part of this job is getting these off. And then I'll turn the camera a little bit. Actually, no, I don't think it's gonna be able to see, but you have to use two screwdrivers. get in there in between here and here to pry off the uh, the boot assembly so we're gonna wedge that in there and wedge all right so you could see from the factory Ford decided to wedge a piece of foam in between the rattling spring which is a band-aid to the annoying shifter buzz that everyone's got and another problem also is this seats into here and it's not perfectly tight. So we're gonna go through a couple of quick steps and how to fix that. So first order of business is remove the O-ring from the top. And you're gonna get grease all over your hands. <laughs> and then you're gonna remove this guy which is the isolator. And just set those aside. Now, the way I take off the spring is I use a vice grip, needle nose vice grip. And you can lay a towel down here. And I like to pretty much get the spring out of the way so I can get the retaining pin out. Like, just like that. And Use a little punch. And you don't want to lose the drink. So, got the heat shrink from the bin, and then we're just going to cut this to size as shown. Slip it over the shaft, as you can see. And start heating it up. that cool and make sure my expensive very expensive Japanese scissors don't put a hole in the seat <laughs> okay and the spring that's well, still you know, it still has to cool yeah it's got to cool so we give it a couple of minutes to cool and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna grease the spring up just with some conventional poly grease, nothing fancy. You're gonna grease it up there and there. Like I said, the purpose of doing this is to isolate the metal to metal contact with the vibration that this engine puts out and it tends to cause everything in this car to shake. And it drives me crazy. Got the spring on. Now we're gonna put the pin back in. Same method as before. Except actually now we could get this in without doing that. Most likely. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna re-lubricate that when uh, we put it all back together the isolator back on put the o-ring back on there to dampen the plastic shaft collar from banging into it 
okay. Now we're going to take a little bit of 3M window weld. And we're going to stuff a couple of little areas where the plastic collar is going to sit. You're going to use a screwdriver to just kind of get it in there. You don't want it too big, too bulky. Okay. And this is just for picking up the slack and the tolerance between the plastic and the other piece of the shifter. Okay. So we got that. And a little bit more. sure the pull-up action is gonna work and it might be a little tighter than usual but it's not a big deal it's gonna wear itself in the more you drive the car Okay. now we're ready to put this back on Two millimeter socket. A couple of wax. And she's gone. Pop this back in. Shift her boot back. Put this piece back in. And then just reinstall your knob. And as you can see, there is no more play between the plastic collar and the recess in the shifter. And that's where a lot of the rattles coming from is from here and a little bit of the spring. So that's that. Take the 10, 15 minutes to figure it out, watch the video and fix your own car. But if it doesn't drive you crazy, so be it. And that's more power to you. But if the noise gets to a point where it annoys you, here's a permanent solution to that.